Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for clicking, tuning in, doing what you do. So today I'm going to be doing a post commentary on a run that I got a 3210 on. Using this strategy, you can get under 30 minutes with enough execution, practice, so on and so forth. So this is mainly for people who want to get into speedrunning Cuphead but don't really know where to start. I'll be explaining my strategies and why I do what I do. So if you already run Cuphead, you can still watch this and laugh at how I botch it up. So the first thing you're going to want to do is turn off V-Sync. It's been banned by the speedrunning community. And you'll want to be careful because V-Sync likes to turn itself back on when you restart the game, so make sure it's off. You'll have to turn it off pretty much every time you restart the game. Now before you get to Forest Follies, it seems pretty basic. You're just going to want to exit to the map during the tutorial segment. It's a little bit trickier than you might expect though. There is a bit of lag from when you hit the up button to exit to map and when you can actually hit A to exit to map. So you want to be careful of that. Give yourself a little second before you hit the A button to exit to map. If you get a frame perfect or do it too quick, you might even soft lock the game. So first you're going to want to talk to that strawberry to get uh, three coins, and you're going to want to get all five coins in Forest Follies. This is going to be the only run and gun stage we'll be doing. Now don't strain yourself mashing too hard, you really only need to mash around four or five times a second. That seems to be about good. Any further and you're just causing unnecessary strain on your, on your arms. Now I'm using an Xbox controller, but this is on PC with some custom controls. Um, I'm not going to be doing the acorn skip, which I'll explain in a second. If you don't do that, it's better just to get three or four parries, just to pass the acorn machine, kill him a little bit faster. But uh, you can clip under the ground, and you can actually skip him. I don't do that because it's I can't get it consistent enough, and it's not really worth restarting over to me. So a good force follies without the acorn skip, you can get 40, 41 seconds. I actually got a 42 this time, but it's it's nothing worth resetting over. That's pretty much splitting hairs, losing one second. I'm trying to shave off minutes here, not seconds. So I'm not going to reset over a one second loss. So after you got your eight coins, you're going to want to go to the shop and get the, uh, the roundabout and the lobber. Those are generally the weapons that the speedrunners are going to be using. You can also use the spread shot, but I don't see many runners using that. Now after you buy these two, if you mash Y, then you're going to get a prompt from the pig while you're in the menu. Just hit Y one more time, and that will cancel out. Or another button, you know, if you're not using an Xbox controller. So what you're going to see me using, and you're going to use this pretty much every boss battle, is the what's called a weapon swap glitch. Basically, there's a, there's a recharge rate when you're using a weapon, and if you switch weapons back and forth rapidly, then you don't have to wait on that recharge rate, and it essentially doubles the damage you can do. Uh, you have to be careful though, because when you're using a super, if you use a super on the same frame that you're swapping your weapons, you won't have a weapon selected, and nothing will come out of your super. And that means you've pretty much wasted a card. So you're going to want to stop mashing your weapon swap right before you use a super. There is another way you can lose a super. I think if you take damage at the same time that you use a super, you also lose it. So that wasn't a bad veggie monsters. I can get down to a 32. I think this was a 33. But with enough practice, they're... They're pretty basic. And again, you don't have to mash constantly. Just know the right time to mash. It'll it'll save your, your thumb some straining. So next we're going to do frogs. And frogs are kind of RNG reliant. I think I got some bad RNG in this fight, but I ended up, I ended up still uh, doing pretty good. So you can end up losing 10 seconds based on how the frogs feel today. So it looks like I got some good RNG here. Depending on how you play them, you're going to want the lower frog to attack first. Otherwise, you'll end up losing 10 seconds. He'll go into his fan phase, and we're actually going to be skipping that phase just by doing enough damage. I usually do around three supers after they finish their first phase. And right here, um, you don't really have to damage them. I'm just trying to boost up to 10 to 5 cards. The slot machine has a fixed amount of HP, so it doesn't really matter how much damage you do to the frogs beforehand because you'll always have to do the same amount of damage to the slot machine to kill him. And I got some bad RNG here. I got the Tigers, and this is probably the hardest of the three to dodge while using your supers. I ended up surviving it, but I don't always survive with the Tiger. So I think I ended up getting a 58. Uh, if you get perfect RNG, you can get it down to a 47, maybe a 46. Oh, I still got a, I still got a pretty good time. 
It was a little bit slower because of the, the tigers. I had to focus on dodging a bit more than usual. Now next we're going to be going to Goopy. Goopy is pretty easy with some practice. Some people try to jump at the same time he's jumping. That's really not necessary because as long as you're behind him, most of your bullets are going to end up hitting him when he hits the ground. So what you're going to want to focus on is just staying behind him. See, most of those bullets end up hitting his back once, once he lands on the ground. Mainly it's the corners you're going to want to watch out for because your bullets will go off the corner and won't really hit him. I get that parry. I don't, I don't, you don't really need to get it, but it's just for an extra super. Using a super compared to just using, just using your weapon swap saves around, I'd say half a second to a second. Not too much of a difference, but it definitely adds up, so it's worth using your supers. Uh, that wasn't a bad goopy. Uh, I can get it down to a 23, but a lot of that is based on just RNG and how much bullets I miss during the first phase. Now you're going to want to go into the airplane tutorial, because you can't proceed without it. Wait until he's done with his barrel roll, and then you can pause and exit the map. Next we're going to be doing uh, the segment that I call Betty Blimp. This one's not too difficult. Again, uh, it takes a bit of practice, but once you get it down, it's down. I usually don't lose very many runs to this. Mainly you just want to make sure that your bullets are coming into contact with her. If you use a super right here, then it'll constantly hit her while she's sweeping across the map, and that's that does about the same amount of damage as five cards of super, but you're only using one card, so that's it saves a bit of time. I don't think I did it twice. You can do it twice, but you'll be down to one HP, so depending on how confident you are, you can go for that. I ended up just using a five card super instead, and then I still got hit, so it's pretty much a waste. Should have gone for that second bullet sweep. Lost a bit of time to that. If you do it fast enough and you continuously hit her with your bullets, you can actually get her stuck in that second phase, and she'll stay like that for the rest of the battle. But if you end up getting to the uh, to the moon phase, uh, it's really not that hard. You just got to make sure the stars are aligning in your favor. You're going to want to stay as close to her face as possible, because when those lasers come down, your bullets won't go through the lasers. So you're going to want to be in front of the lasers as best you can. So just stay in front of her face. If you see the tell that the laser is about to come, just back up a little bit. If it's not about to come right in front of you, then just pull forward a bit. You'll miss those lasers. Not that difficult. Now the flower guy, he's another fairly easy boss. There is a glitch you can get him stuck in. You can pretty much get him to freeze. What you want to do is stay with, stay close enough to his face so that if you dash you would land in his hitbox. And you're going to want to be jumping because the lobbers will miss if you're not in the air. I ended up not getting very good RNG. This is a, this is one of the more difficult attacks to dodge. And I think he ends up doing it twice, so I don't get to do the glitch, um, because what you need to do for him to get frozen is when he claps his hand together, if he opens them and it's the three acorns, if you dash into the acorn quick enough, you'll actually freeze him and he'll get stuck in a constant animation loop, and you can just finish, finish him off right then and there. So that was a pretty good Inkwell 1. Generally, I try to shoot for getting to the dice house for Inkwell 2 in under uh, 8 minutes. So I ended up getting there at 7.45, which is 15 seconds faster than what I shoot for. So I was doing some pretty good pace at this point, for my own standards anyway. This part's pretty basic, just skip through as fast as you can. Make sure you're doing the right button inputs. Thank you. 
Now I ended up getting a subpar Carney Clown, and that's because um, I didn't get the glitch. Now you can uh, you can get him to freeze in his second phase, and that'll save you the time when uh, he's when he's changing phases. You can't really attack him, so you end up losing time. So if you get him stuck in a phase, then you can continuously uh, hit him basically, and that saves quite a bit of time. But I didn't get that, so I was trying to at least get this horse down uh, without going up, and he does go up, so I wasted around 7 seconds there. But if you don't get the glitch, you're gonna want the horse to, uh, you're gonna want to kill the horse before he comes up and comes back down again. So this is what I'm talking about. If you get the glitch, then uh, you're gonna be constantly damaging him, and here, since I didn't get the glitch, uh, there's, it's pretty much wasted time. So that was the Carney Clown. Not too hard. Probably one of the easiest in Inkwell 2, in my opinion. So now we're going on to the Genie, and your route can differ. Some people like to do uh, Miss Vanellope Von Sweets over there first, and then do Genie and then the Carney Clown but that's not the route that I take. You're gonna wanna make sure to talk to that guy because he gives you the, uh, your rockets, your second weapon uh, for the plane segments. And you're gonna want that for the genie, it definitely helps. Because genie has a hidden hitbox um, at the bottom middle of, middle of the screen, so if you stay at the bottom left, you can hit him with your bombs and that, that'll stay throughout the entire uh, battle. So even if genie's on the screen, you can still damage him from that hidden hitbox. So I'm damaging him uh, from both my rockets and my bullets at the same time. And you can see that my cards will still increase in this section um, when I'm damaging him from below. Now, Genie also takes damage when you damage those faces there, so I try to, I try to uh, kill off all the faces while staying in the bottom left. If you kill him fast enough, you're going to get him stuck in his third phase, which is the phase where he's a coffin and he's a giant red face. That's the current genie strategy, basically. Um, I ended up playing it a bit safe here, because those ghosts end up hitting me every single time. I can have 3 HP and he'll still he'll still kill me with those ghosts, so I, I'm playing it a bit safe. But if you stay close enough to his face, then you should dodge those uh, mini planet things that he spits out. But the ghosts are still an issue. I haven't figured out a liable way to dodge those ghosts when you're that close to his face. So I played it a little bit safe and I end up losing a, about 10 seconds. 10 to 12 seconds from being safe, but I'm pretty sure I would have died um, if I if I tried to be a bit more risky here. So the next one, Candy Crush, that's a pretty easy boss in my opinion. I think I ended up getting the worst RNG you can get, which is having the mini bosses Candy Corn and Muffin in the same boss battle. Really all you want to do is memorize the mini bosses that she spits out. And you want to make sure, again, that you're consistently hitting the boss. And that's the hardest with, again, the Candy Corn and the Muffin, because they, they're the ones that move around both vertical and horizontal, as opposed to just horizontal. So the candy corn guy, he's going to either go up and down from the very left, the middle, or the very right. So as long as you're in between those sections, you should be fine. The muffin goes in a zigzag. You're going to want to uh, go above him and shoot from below. Dodge his little splash that he does there. And you see, I lose a bit of time. There's a few seconds where I'm not actually, um, my bullets aren't coming into contact with him. Now really for this section, you just want to make sure that you kill her before her head pops out. And you want to be careful about the, the little house right there, because as you can see I took damage. The house moves left a little bit, so just be careful of that. But Candy Crush really isn't that bad for me. 
I don't lose very many runs to her. Now for this boss, you're going to want to uh, stay very close, but stay above his mouth because that's where he shoots his, his eggs from. And if he, finger, if he tries to finger you, just go a bit above him. And try not to go right in front of his mouth like I just did there. Because that'll, be, that'll always be the time when he decides to shoot an egg at you. Now, you're going to want to try to hit your bombs and the bullets at the same time when he goes into this phase, but if he's at the very top, it's a lot more difficult. So I ended up just using uh, one weapon. Which usually means he does that for two phases. Generally, I don't go for the parries here, but it, was, it wasn't it was out of my way. Now for this phase, just uh, stay inside his little egg circle. And right before it closes, you're just going to want to squeeze out. Now for his last phase, um, stay under the blue bird right there. Um, if you get a little bit too high, you will take damage. If you're down to one health at this point, it helps to use a rocket because you're invincible for a short period after using it. So if you're in a tight spot, just uh, use your super. That's why I try to have five cards by the time I get to that point of the boss. Now the dragon sometimes gives me a bit of trouble. Um, there's there's a glitch here where you can get him uh, stuck in his second phase, and you'll end up skipping his third phase entirely if you get it just right. I I didn't get it this time, but it's it's not too too much of an issue. You don't lose that much time. So just uh, just stay in place until he shoots his lasers, um, and remember that his tail is going to come up after he shoots his lasers. So just either be very close in front of him or very far behind him that way you have enough room to dodge that tail now there's a hidden hitbox to the very right during this section so I I take advantage of that here now this would be the point where the boss freezes if you get the glitch but I didn't get it so instead I just stay behind him because his necks uh, don't have hitboxes only his heads do so just avoid the heads and avoid the, uh, the fireballs that come out and you should be fine I think the most difficult part about being behind the dragon is making sure you stay on the platforms. To me it helps uh, if you use a super to hover in the air for a little bit longer. Now I don't know why, but I ended up skipping that segment. I think I think I slipped and hit the wrong button. I have it set... I have this skip segment macroed on my controller. I probably just slipped and hit that button by mistake. And generally my time to hit the dice house for Inkwell 3 is going to be 16 minutes, so I was still 10 seconds below that. So I would consider this to be a good run so far. Where I ended up losing time was Inkwell 3, which is generally where I always lose time. I could honestly lose a life to any one of these bosses. Probably the, uh, the, the mouse boss is the one that I die the least to. Now, I think I ended up dying here um, the first time I played the bee, just due, su just due to uh, bad platforming. Yeah, I ended up taking a hit there, and that cost me um, the death. So when she gets into this phase, you want to do as much damage as possible, because your goal is to kill her before she gets into her plane phase. So right here, I do too much dodging, um, because I was down to 2 health, and I didn't do enough damage, so she ends up going to her third phase.
And again, those platformings can really mess you up because sometimes they just don't appear where you want them to appear. And you, you really want to beat the boss before she gets into this stage because it's a lot harder to damage her. Um, her hitbox is only on that head there. So just make sure you're doing constant damage so you can avoid that segment entirely. I think I still got the plane uh, phase this battle, but it was a bit better. Now honestly what I should have done is just allowed them to hit me so I could have done more damage to her. If I had done that I would have been able to skip the plane phase. But it really didn't last all too long. But you can definitely see how you will instantly lose time if you get to that third segment. Now on Dr. Cal's robot, there's a skip where you can actually end the battle in, the, in his very first phase. I don't end up getting it. I've practiced it for over two hours and I, I still can't get it consistent enough. But I would say I get the skip maybe one out of every six times. I, uh, I need more practice on Dr. Cal. I ended up losing more time to him. So what you're going to want to do is first you're going to want to uh, destroy his three body segments. And usually I go for the laser first just so it's not in your way. Now if you aim just right you can have your bombs hitting the lower, the lower portion and your bullets hitting the higher portion. Now for this heart, this is where the glitch comes in. You want to wait until it's damaged like it is right now. Um, give it one more bomb shot and then spam your supers. And if you do it just right you'll end the boss right there. Uh, the way you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to kill the heart with a super. So the last, um, the last hit needs to be a super, and if you do that just right, you'll end up, um, you'll end up finishing the battle, and that can save you around 40 seconds, depending on how fast you are. So I ended up missing it twice here, and I just had to finish the boss battle regularly. You also want to make sure you don't have five cards, so you want to uh, occasionally use a super just so that you don't reach that five card limit, because it won't work if you use the, uh, the five card super. So my execution was fine, but I started spamming my supers a little bit too early. You want to damage the, um, the cracked heart a, just uh, slightly before you start using your supers. I would say um, long enough to do one or two extra bombs on it. And you want to be right up close to it. That way, if you're, if you're, if you use the the magnet super, then all of the magnets hit the hit the heart. So if you end up getting to this phase, just try to stay close enough to him that both the bombs and the rockets are getting to him. Which I sort of fail at because I'm bad at this section, so I just play it safe. If you have enough health, you can also uh, just allow yourself to take damage, so you can pass through those walls. Dramatic Frantic is another one that I find fairly, <clears throat> excuse me, fairly simple. Pretty much all you want to do is just, uh, like as usual, uh, damage her as much as you can. Uh, the more you're hitting her hitbox, the faster you're going to end up killing the boss. So just sort of learn her patterns. Uh, there's a hidden hitbox at the top left here. It's a bit hard to reach with the lobber and roundabout combo. I think I ended up hitting it a few times because the cards went up. You're going to want to save... Uh, your supers until her third phase. Um, it's good to have around five cards at that point. 
That way you can uh, kill this phase before she does the big wave or the lightning. Now for this section, if you use a super, then you're gonna hover in the air for a bit longer. So what I like to do is if the umbrella is right under me, um, and I don't want to land on it, I'll just use a super to hover in the air for a bit longer and the umbrella will sweep to the side, allowing me to land safely. Now, Marine Corps is, in my opinion, the easiest boss battle of Inkwell 3. Uh, I think it honestly should have been an Inkwell 2 boss, maybe replace it with the Dragon. But that's just on me. Maybe the devs wanted to give you a little break, just give you an easy boss, just face through, make you feel a little bit better about yourself. So when he does this attack, um, occasionally if you stay close enough, then uh, there just won't be a projectile to dodge. But I didn't end up getting any of those. Now if he wants to shoot his flame, then you can hover above it just by using a super, staying in the air a bit longer. So you can stay on that upper platform the whole time. Really not much to that boss, just some practice. Now Captain Crush is a boss that I definitely struggle with. It's very RNG heavy. Probably the worst attack he can give you is going to be his pink octopus that shoots projectiles or the little fish thing that jump out of the sea. Those are going to be the hardest to dodge while continuously um, shooting at the captain. It can be done but I'm not able to do it so I just end up playing it safe and waiting for the attack to end. If you're good enough, you can parry these, and that'll give you um, some extra supers. You can get quite a bit of extra supers just by parrying those. Now what I like to do is go right under the chest before it reaches the captain, that way you can continuously hit him, and the chest will hover back over you, go through another cycle. I got some pretty good RNG on this captain here. The shark is one that you can continuously keep hitting the captain, and another one is the octopus that shoots the inks. Um, you can stay close enough to his to his tonsil here, so that that way you can just jump over those orange projectiles, but I play it a little bit safe here because I'm on 1 HP. But if you can get your timing down, you can just jump over those and stay right up in that tonsil's face. The tonsil does have a tell, so you can, you'll can you be able to tell right before it shoots, but it's very short. Not a bad captain, but I could have shaved off 5 seconds if the RNG was a little bit better. Plus if I hadn't have taken damage from his orange projectile, I wouldn't have had to wait until his laser came. Calamari is another easy one once you get the hang of it. It's difficult in a casual run, but once once you learn um, all of the moves that she can do, the combinations, it's really not that bad. So you're going to want to aim for her face, because that's the only place that her hitbox is. You can't damage her on her body or even her hair. It has to be right at the face. At least in this segment section. So this is probably the hardest combination to dodge, is the uh, the blowfish with the ghosts. But with enough practice again, you can, you can manage. So the eel phase usually doesn't even last long enough for the eels to shoot their, their projectiles. Just stay right up in her face. When she loses her body, get a little bit higher. Don't be directly above her face because you can damage her hair at this point. And if you stay close enough, you'll end up being able to dodge those those green skulls and her um, her petrifying laser. So really, all you have to make sure to watch out for are the uh, the spike walls that come to your right.
Now this is where I mainly messed up on my PB. I ended up dying to the ghost train twice. And this is where I saved most of my time compared to my PB. Because I got them the first time. Uh, the main thing you're going to want to watch out for are the pumpkins that throw down parry projectiles. Because they scoot your cart forward. If you can parry them, you will get a few extra supers. Be careful with this guy. You want to jump and attack. Use your super before you reach the, the highest point of your jump or else you will take damage. And he can still damage you even when he's in his death animation. So just do sort of the same thing for these guys. Um, you can usually kill the first one even before he does his laser. This is a little slow. I think he does his laser cycle two times here. But generally you can do it with him only using one laser. Okay, that was a one laser. For this guy, you just mainly want to watch out for that uh, bone boomerang thing he throws. Try to do as much damage as possible so you can you can one cycle this. If you if you cause enough damage to his heart, you don't have to you don't have to wait to parry again and have his chest open. You can do it in one cycle. I got it in two cycles though because I missed a few times. Still a best segment though, at least outside of my practice. Now the way speedrunners do king dice can vary a bit. What I hear the fastest combination is, is you're, wa you're gonna want to do mini boss number three, four, and nine. Nine is generally a long mini boss, that's the, that's the monkey, but uh, they have figured out a monkey skip where you can skip that segment, uh, that mini boss entirely. Um, I'm not consistent enough to, to use that, so the ones that I ended up picking are 3, 4, and 8, usually the ones that I go for. But I actually go for 6 this time because um, there's an extra heart. I like to get an extra heart just in case I take damage. Because I usually lose at least 2 health to his final phase where he's throwing those cards at you. So it's good to have at least 3 health before you reach his final phase. This guy isn't too hard, just memorize uh, the pattern of his fireballs. Really take your time because if you're too fast, then you're gonna end up taking damage somehow or another. It's better to be slow and not lose health, for King Dice at least. Unless you're going for a world record pace, it's better just to take your time. Because you'll see here in a second why uh, going too fast, getting too confident can really mess you up. So again, I don't usually go for this guy. Mini boss 4 is faster, but I took him just so that I could get an extra health, which I ended up immediately losing. But he doesn't lose you don't lose too much time if you want to use this boss instead. It's good to practice all the mini bosses just so that uh, if you get some bad RNG, you can just switch around your mini bosses to make sure you get some extra health. So if you go for 3, 4, and 9, you end, up, you end up saving a dice roll. You have to do one less roll than you'll see me do. Or a lot less rolls than you'll see me do, actually. But if you can't do the monkey skip consistently, this is your next best thing. This, this one is very easy and very short. Just dodge the lasers as he spits them out. If you stay right above him, then those Q, those, uh, Q blocks probably won't hit you. And they're not that hard to dodge if they aim for the center. So here's where I made 
probably the worst mistake of the run. It ended up costing me a minute. I was a little too quick on my dice rolls. I got a little bit too confident, and I ended up hitting the start over. Yep. Uh, that sucks. So if this happens, you can just re-land on the cleared sections. It wastes about a minute of time. I could have gotten probably around a 31.20 if I had have gotten that. And each of these rolls costs about 8 seconds. So this guy, you can usually kill him um, with him only shooting his cards one time if you're consistently shooting at his face and using all your supers. Try to save 5 supers. 4 or 5 is usually a good number to have. And if you keep hitting him, then you'll probably only lose 2 damage, and you'll get him before his, he throws the cards a second time. But what could have been a 206 king dice ended up being a 306. And this is going to be your most critical part of the run. Make sure you actually hit yes here to uh, the devil, because if you don't, you will have a very bad time, at least a 90%. So that is it for the run, guys. Thanks for watching, tuning in, etc. Um, if you're going to be doing all bosses, it's pretty much the same thing, except you will be fighting the devil is pretty much the only difference, so you'll have to practice him. But that is it, guys. Good luck on your runs, and I will catch you next time.